My dance instructor Brendan. Hey guys, so my name is Brendan Hansford and I'm an international choreographer based in London. Obviously I teach here at Pineapple and Lana's just done a class with me. Um, if you want to find out more about me, obviously I choreograph for artists, brands, commercials, TV, films. Go and have a look, Google me. So as you know, I've been going to Brendan's classes for like a month, six weeks? How six long weeks it's been now. Running, yeah, no, no, right? six weeks from the yeah, beginning. Six yeah, six weeks. I feel like I've definitely grown as a dancer. I always said I couldn't dance. I just wanted to show you guys what I've been up to, how it's going, and I thought you guys would be interested in a chat with Brendan to find out what dance can do for you. Yeah. <laughs> First question, what does dance mean to you? Dance to me, and it sounds so cheesy, it's literally life. 
if you do a, a nine to five job, it's mm. very much you go to work, you leave, you leave everything at work, you can go home, you can forget about it. Dance, you can't. Like you wake up, you're a dancer. You, you go to the gym, you're training as a dancer. You, you train differently. You're in the studio all day, you're a dancer. You're at home on the computer, you're a dancer. You're building, you're networking, you're a freelancer. It's literally a lifestyle. If you're not passionate about it and you don't love what you do, it's something people kind of jump out of really quickly. But if you've got that, that kind of Passion. fire and spark, yeah, fire. It's, it just becomes your life. It, yeah. it, it overwhelms you, but in such an amazing way that you love it. So can you be a dancer without it being your whole life? You can dance without it being your whole life. Yeah. You can love dance, you can come to class, you can enjoy it, you can enjoy the movement of it, the way it makes you feel, the endorphins it lets off. But to be a full-time dancer, you, you, you basically have to give it everything. It's a hard enough industry as it is. So yeah. You've got to give it like everything. Yeah. It's very hard to be a, a part-time working dancer. Mm. Am I a part-time dancer now? I'm a beginner. You're, I suppose you're, yeah, you're, you're just dancing. I'm just, yeah, I'm just you're, dancing. You're loving dancing. And I'm loving and it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when you dance for a job and you do your job, you always you lose a bit of passion sometimes. Yeah. Luckily, I've managed to keep it up for so many years. I'm old. <laughs> um, but, you know, you're getting into it now and you're starting to really enjoy it and love it. And before you know it, you'll yeah. probably be in four classes a week. Five classes I was week. thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, what slash who are your dance inspirations? I'm very inspired by the LA dancers. You know, mm. Max Stepanina, Jojo Gomez, Jay Bug, all those guys. They're, they're doing it. Like, they're doing it hard and they're doing it big. But if we go back in time, there was actually a picture my mum showed me the other day. It was really funny because it was when I was eight and I was in Mallorca and I won a Michael Jackson dancing competition. Oh, and I amazing. still remember that I used to watch Michael Jackson and just be amazed by it. This is before I started dancing. So not a lot of people know that. I didn't start until I was 18. Oh, really? So I didn't start dancing until very, very late. Oh, and you but said you started with ballet, right? Yeah, so I was originally a ballet contemporary dancer. Yeah. I went to the Laban Centre. And then at some point realised that wasn't really me. Yeah. Do you feel like people it? get into ballet early? Yeah, oh my god, yeah. three years old. But no, yeah, Michael Jackson was definitely a massive inspiration for me many years ago. Um, and now I'm just, I, I kind of, hopefully I'm an inspiration to some people, <laughs> but I pull in from everywhere, yeah. just watching this. You know, the birth of YouTube was just brilliant. YouTube is amazing, so right? Much, we right? love YouTube. Thumbs up for YouTube. <laughs> and you did a BTS dance routine. Serendipity. Yes. Yeah, so have you taken any sort of inspiration from Korean dance routines? Well, I now, like have a, I now have a South Korean following on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, I bet like, you do. It jumped up like a thousand <laughs> followers in a day or two. It's crazy. I know I've got some armies um, watching. So if you guys love BTS, Brendan has a dance routine to Serendipity by Jimin. So yeah. check it out. And it's also a tutorial, so you can actually learn the choreo, post it, tag us both in it. I was watching some of the routines, especially Jimin, mm. and wow. Question number three. How do you feel like people change after they start dancing? I've gone in so many ways, but mm. the biggest one is confidence, obviously. Yeah. You came to my first class like six weeks ago, mm. you hit at the back, you kind of <laughs> just picked up little bits here and there, mm. and you could tell that like, you were looking down a lot. And now, well, hopefully you'll see some of the footage. Your head's up, you're coming to the front, mm. you're performing, you're getting it out. And I'm going to kind of throw a question back to you. Do you feel like it's helped you in life? Now, if I mess up, it's okay, because it's just a building block and it's something that I can learn from. And also just the whole, the performance aspect of yeah. it, you know, really getting into it, like putting your all into it, giving it energy, smiling and like just power. I think, I think it's something it? about like, moving your body. Yes, yeah, it is. The minute you get confident with how everything moves, yeah. it does make you more comfortable because yeah. you walk different, you stand different, yeah. you stand with slightly higher poise and posture, not poise, but you know what I mean? Like there's, I think there's something about being able to control your body better mm. gives you more confidence in yeah. life. That's my yeah. theory behind it. I think so. And just like the whole, like a metaphor for life, like putting your all into it. Mm. It does go into like the rest of yeah. life, like put your all into it. Because one, actually one tip, if you do come to a dance class, whether it be mine or somebody else's, is don't hold back. Ironically, mm. The one that kind of holds back because they want to look cool or they're a bit shy will look worse than the rest of the class. Mm. The minute you let go and let everything go crazy and big is when you start to look good. Mm. So feel silly and you'll actually look good. I'm still working on it. I'll get there. <laughs> You're actually I'll get there. really well. <laughs> Brendan, go. what is something that you wish people knew about dance that you don't think they already know? One thing I know that's been a problem in my life um, from people is that when you say dance, a lot of people, not so much now, it's got better, will ask, is that your real job? Mm. So what, what, what do you want to do with your life? No, I'm, I'm a dancer, I'm a choreographer. Yeah, okay, but seriously though, what, what are you going to do? People don't get how hard dancing is because we're not just physically moving, not trying to remember everything we've just learned, not trying to build ourselves as a business and brand ourselves as a business and do all the admin. We do our books, we, we send invoices, we have to reach out, we network, we, mm. 
basically we are freelancers and the product is us. So we have to make the product perfect the whole time. We then have to also brand us perfectly the whole time. And because we're organisms, we're not like a can of something, a can of pop drink that we can go, let's promote that. We've got to promote ourselves. And then obviously if we get injured, what do we do then? You know, our body is our thing. Then we've got to have kind of a backup plan to go, well, I can choreograph. So I know that I'm, I'm older, so my body, if I tried to do a six week rehearsal period, my body would probably give up. <laughs> so I know being a choreographer, I can step back and watch mm. and guide and mold and make things. So that works better for me. If a dancer gets injured, that's it. And I think- And have you been injured? Oh my God, I'm injured now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, uh, wait a minute. Rotational cuff muscle strain here. My uh, sciatic nerve is giving me problems because it's pinched in my spine. And um, there's a bubble of water under my knee at the moment. Oh so my every time gosh, I put you're weight on it, apart. it feels like <laughs> someone's really kind of getting in there. Oh. Uh, I've had loads of injuries. Broke you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it from watching him dance. You <laughs> well, I broke my foot on stage before. I had to finish oh. a show and came off and my foot was like a balloon. Oh yeah, I think goodness. I broke my foot three times. I've had an operation on this knee, operation here, operation here. I've had an operation on that shoulder. Yeah, it's literally like wow. non-stop. Injuries are like part of the parcel. Yeah. You just you just got to prevent it as much as you can by stretching, rolling stuff out, always You're trying like to You're like a Formula One car. Yeah, constantly like, breaking. Yeah, For 100 constantly miles an hour breaking. and then, ah, oh, yeah. Spit stop. <laughs> wow. Okay, right, next question. The next question. What is the biggest struggle when it comes to building a dancer? <laughs> Swift link in. I've just directed and starring in a documentary which is going to be released on iTunes, Amazon and Google Play on the 8th of June called Building a Dancer. And the whole process is about taking a dancer who's an incredible dancer already mm. but hasn't quite had that break, that next step. So a bit like a rags to riches story. Mm. And so we take this one dancer and we do a whole rebrand on her. So we give her new styling, new pictures, new video, new website. Then I teach her how to use those tools to reach out to clients and get work and get on agencies and so on. The name of the girl is Yota. Well, her real name is Pana Yota Haji Georgi, but we actually changed the name. <laughs> Watch the documentary to find out. Um, and we take her on this roller coaster journey mm. of going from this very unconfident girl who was ready to give up, like genuinely ready to give up. And now she's, she's doing work all the time. She's reaching out, she's networking. Don't get me wrong, it's a slow process. She's mm. not like suddenly dancing with the stars, but yeah. her life is so on track right now. She's just doing incredible things. On the 8th of June, make sure you go and download the documentary and have a watch and obviously give some feedback. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, especially from a non-dancer point of view. Because that's, that's really interesting to me. I think it's, um, do you know what? Someone gave me a really good description to it the other day. It's a no holes barred behind the scenes look of what it takes to really be a dancer. It's a lovely story. The girl, I mean, even I, I still cry at it and I know what's coming. Oh, oh yeah, it's no, it's, there's moments where you're like, I feel for this girl. Like, it's mm. a lot, it's a lot. One last question. Go. What is, what is the pinnacle of success for a dancer? Ooh, for a dancer to be able to live off what you do. It's quite hard to get work, mm. but if you brand yourself properly, you can shine out between everyone else. As a choreographer, oh, do you know, it's a hard one because I don't, for me, it's not really about the money anymore. Mm. It's more about what I get to create. Like, I got to create a documentary. I've never done that before, so it was an incredible thing. Mm. And then there's a live show I want to create, and there's a documentary number two that might follow Ooh. up, depending on what happens with this one. So for me, it's creating something that actually makes an impact, that can change people's mm. minds, or even just get people thinking. For me, that's, that's the pinnacle of success. Mm. And you're doing that every day, every I day. <laughs> I come on Saturdays and everybody is so happy, everybody feels so energised, everybody feels better with themselves when they've been yeah. to your class. So, Especially yeah. today when it was so hot. It was so hot. <laughs> I was dying. When he had us doing jump squats. We're doing hip hop, it's great. Hey. <laughs> Any parting words? Never give up on what you want to do because the only way to fail is to give up. And remember that failing is good because when you fail, you learn something. So make sure when you fail, you fail forward, learn from it and keep going and keep going and keep going. Because again, every time you fall, you fail, you're just one step closer to what you're trying to get out of life. Keep on going, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was really good. Oh, you're going. You're still going. That's it for the smoke. <laughs> You know